Good morning. Today is June 9th, 2017. And we have our first ever class on telepathy. Have with me Jim, Jess, April, and Angie. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, Max. <laughs> so the idea of the class is to practice for our workshop. We, um, <clears throat> we have a four four day, four day, five nights, and morning and evening. So basically, almost four and a half day for workshop in uh, in August coming, and to sign up for the workshop using the discounted price go there to hucola.org and the tickets are air tickets become more and more expensive so hurry up uh, the price will be raised soon now jim and i need to practice it we need to establish our curriculum we have some of stuff is uh channeled so we don't need to practice but i guess the current needs to practice that as well <laughs> and um and some of the stuff is um we need to really formulate our um, what we teach and it kind of channels as as, as a preparer I, I it, it just comes easily so I write it down and there is almost the whole scheme but we need to pronounce it so we'll start with telepathy there is an echo and it comes from Lila hey Lila hi hello uh, do you mind muting thank you yay and hey Alex so uh, the, the whole download is much bigger than uh, which I received is much bigger than one hour. So I will just take highlights. So telepathy is is the future of humanity. It is what our aliens alien all the time. So they are telepathic, and some of them can't even speak anymore without technology. And actually, there is a nice video. It's kind of very disheartening video because uh, a gray, a Zeta is treated badly by the humans, the military. But he tries to speak without his technology. I guess they just took off his technology. And the only thing he can say is mama. Basically, their speech is so um, up now, decayed. The speech apparatus they can't really speak in human in human conditions and uh, I mean they're telepathic, but on video camera you can see that and it's it's very unpleasant um, sad to see that see how they treat him anyway so we are moving there we are moving from speaking with with the sound and flapping our meat uh, in inside our mouth. <laughs> We are moving to telepathic communication. Um, so, uh, I mean, all the all all message, all the main consistent message we get from the aliens and the spirit is the ascension, right? And reason for ascension is conscious consciousness uplifting and uniting of humanity in a telepathic network. Yes. I, I I think we need to I think I need to correct something. Um, telepathy is not uh, telepathy is the ability to feel one's uh, the other person's emotions and feel what they're feeling. But that, that one is uh, called emp empathy. Telepathy. Uh, Bashar yes, introduced the, the word telepathy. Is, yes, uh, telepathy is something even deeper, but tele. Telepathy is just the ability to feel all the the people's emotions around you. If you walk up to somebody, you'll be able to feel them. You'll you'll be able to say hello as well, but uh, that's not the same as uh, talking psychically. Uh, psychic uh, the, the Greys can talk without using telepathy even they can just talk to each other psychically with mental uh, air uh, mental waves but telepathy is the beginning of that it's the precursor to 
being able to speak to each other without talking at all. But it, you know, it's a gradual thing to move up to uh, to what they have. But telepathy is actually the beginning of that. Uh, there was a time in history where I can, uh, if you talk to people that are a little older, that they, they'll be able to walk into a room, and the room was just sort of dead to them. And the, you'd go in and not really feel too much. Even in a party, you could walk in and not feel uh, any real emotion or energy or anything of that nature. But as time is moving on, we're becoming more sensitive to energies around us. And now when you walk into a room, you can, a lot of people can sense if it's uh, what kind of crowd it is, if it's a happy crowd or a, uh, not, not only because of what's going on, but they can actually sense it within themselves uh, that it's a, it's a really happy crowd or if there's some people there that are angry or whatever. Uh, are you feel do you feel that way at this time now that you can actually start to sense what people are feeling when you get no closer to them? Yes. Yes. Uh, and that is the next step that we have become sensitive to one another's energy to the point where we know what each other are feeling whenever we come in contact with each other. So therefore, there will. This is going to change the earth. Why? Because there are there are people out there that are very angry. There are people out there that are very happy. There are people uh, with all kinds of emotional uh, things going on every day. But you don't really feel that when you walk up to them. You may feel it a little at this time, but when your telepathy awakens you will know exactly how they feel. You may not know their secret thoughts and you may not know what exactly what they're thinking, but you will know if they're angry, you will know if they're happy, you will know if they're sad or frustrated. And um, if the way this will change the world is if, if you do not temper how you feel a little bit around other people, you're going to be accosting them with your emotions. Does that make sense to you? Because yes. it's going to be it's going to be quite evident at some point what they are feeling. And that is the next step of our evolution is to start sensing one another in a very uh, much more intimate way. And that is a beautiful thing, but yet it is also a, a sort of scary thing because we need to be able to handle what we are feeling, we need to be able to handle what they are feeling. And sometimes it will be necessary to uh, close down a little bit so that you're not taking in so much of their emotions. But you know what this will do to the world? This will calm the world out or even the world out a little bit as far as emotional upheaval. People will understand a little bit more what you are feeling a lot of times at this in this day and age and in prior day and ages uh you can go into a group of people and they can just be uh ranting and raving and changing the atmosphere of the room but they wouldn't really be accosting anybody with their actual emotions necessarily but this will be you will have to temper each other and temper yourself so that you are not accosting each other. And th this will calm the world down a little bit. This will bring things into a little bit more even keel. Do you understand what I mean about that? The last word, keel, I don't understand. What? Even an even uh, emotional, uh, you, you'll want to have a more even feeling about how things are going so uh you will temper how you feel a little bit toward leaving out your emotions so uh, it's called equanimity uh, well keel is i, I don't keel. know who would be able to explain what that means and I even keel is is an, even, an even uh distribution i guess uh -huh. 
Yeah, the, the definition of keel is uh, the keel on a boat. Is and what? A keel on a boat. Oh, okay. And so oh, the, meaning of, the meaning of an even keel is to be steady. Steady. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Steady, right. Okay, uh, about another definition. Uh, I'm, uh, I appreciate all that you said. You, you know more about telepathy than I. I'm more like in, in a theory and you really do stuff. But uh, the definition of telepathy is uh, it's communication of thoughts or ideas by means other than known senses. Correct. I mean, known to mainstream. And another definition, communication from one mind to another by extrasensory means. So that would be, uh, that would be psychic power. That would be psychic energy. Telepathy is not quite to the psychic level. It is, but it's not the full psychic communication. I know that you communicate what you know well, and uh, it's good. But in mainstream, telepathy is any communication. Any communication from one mind to another without material means is telepathy by definition okay. telepathy is communication of again again in mainstream and bashar's explanation but what you know is is more valid because you know stuff and you have your own terminology for that and i don't know it so so we're just trying to establish the the words right so for me psychic is is uh feeling sensing without actually communicating, right? Communication is when one person sends, another one receives, that's a communication. When psychic work, you feel it from anywhere, you just receive it without necessarily somebody sending. Um, so telepathy, psychic work, and telepathy, these are three words which, um, as I understand them, but you're welcome to correct or to expand. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what the word is then I'm trying to explain because it's not quite a full communication, but it is uh -huh. the it is a strong sensation of what's happening with the other person. Right. And transmission it is, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Transmission of feelings. Correct. Not necessarily textual information, not necessarily text or facts words but feelings correct i, I would call it telem telepathy but uh you have just a different uh word for i mean you have a different language for yourself because you do that stuff so you developed your language and well i just I, <laughs> I just read mostly right <laughs> well i don't want to go against the definition of telepathy because we want to keep that intact and when if people look it up we want them to be able to see that but this is an emotional uh, uh, being able to understand what emotions are being felt by each other in a more intimate way than we do now. So, right. and that's telepathy, maybe, because that's fe the feeling of em the empathy of one another. So, mm -hmm. that is the next step before we go into the actual telepathy, which can be communicating. Uh, verbally without speaking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say we don't have enough words because it's new to humanity. I'm sure it's in some alien languages. There would be like hundred words for different kinds of telepathy. If you uh, are telepathic on the level of crown chakra, that would be seventh level telepathy. And then if you're um, telepathic on the level of um, root chakra, it would be first level of telepathy, and so, and so on. And if you a telepathic through your higher self it's a different path and it would have a different language and i'm sure that when it starts happening in a very broad way that people will start calling it something different they'll be calling it uh touch feel or uh touch commune communication or something they'll they'll be using other words other than telepathy or telepathy They'll be using their own uh, colloquialisms, I'm sure, because it will be expressing how they feel about it. So um, the very yeah. next step, though, is to feel each other, the emotions, in a much more intimate way. You will be able to sense each other. Maybe um, 
it will be a higher, uh, it's an overdeveloped sensory perception of emotion uh, mm -hmm. for each other. Mm -hmm. But that is the next step. And already many people are feeling this that have not felt it before. A lot of people are sensing, uh, I get, I will do a, a session with people and they will say, I walked into this room and I felt mm -hmm. this person, I felt their, that they were very nervous and they were, they were jittery and I, and I couldn't help but feel their energy very strongly. And this is the kind of thing that, that uh, will be happening in the future with this telepathy or whatever you want to call it. And that mm -hmm. is our next stage. We're going to be able to sense each other and how we are feeling. And that's why we're going to probably have to temper how we feel, uh, what we let out uh, uh -huh. in certain ways. Transmit, yeah, transmit, send, let out. Yeah, so you yes, project your feelings. To one another. And so that's going to calm the world down a little bit in some ways because you're going to want to not accost your friends and uh, the people that you are nearby with great strong emotions. But there will be times when you feel great love or great anger or great things of this nature and you won't be able to help it. And that will be something that uh, everyone will be able to sense because you will be within that range of their sensitivity. So, like when you go, like my car was uh, damaged to the total, so I, we are buying a new car. And when you go to um, car sales, they transmit a lot of things without language. They are like powerful telepaths, and also they control you with, with their um, powers. So their smile is transmitting a lot of love and it's it's clearly sent outside. Inside there is a clear desire to, how do you say, to make it happen, to make the sale happen. There is a special word which I forgot, but basically to make that, that if, 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 they, if they let you go, you won't likely to come back. So they need to make you buy it now, like today, without leaving the dealership, right? So car dealers are really powerful psychic workers, and what they transmit outside is very different from what they have inside. Their inside emotions could be radically different. So uh, although it's sort of negative and sort of selfish and egotistic, but, and there is a lot of deception there, but I guess that's the future of the culture when uh, you have to really pay attention what you send out and what you keep for yourself. In alien worlds, when we speak with the aliens and ask them about telepathy, they describe that that culture is kind of comes from early. It's, it's already in the culture. How you transmit what you transmit outside and what you keep to yourself. And in different cultures, it's quite different. Like for uh, Takur, for Lirans, until you really do the inner work, until you're really ready, you don't send anything out. You're closed. You prepare yourself, you do emotional work, first emotional, and then thinking is going after that. So Liren's first emotional, emotional integrity is the first step, and then thinking, and then sending, transmitting out. For um, the grays, there is much more, the grays and the Yael is much more uh, ex external communication. They are much more into hive mind, but still there is, there is inner part which is your own, right? Yes. Well, I wanted to <laughs> say salesmen are good at of a psychic manipulation in in the sense that they uh -huh. can they can sense your energy and know what to say mm -hmm. about it and know what to say to right. you to manipulate your thought process. And so that's where their uh, psychic energy is. Mm -hmm. They ha they know they learn movements of people, expressions, uh, and what is coming off of you, and they can manipulate that into uh, something for a positive outcome for themselves. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I saw somebody say something, a definition of some sort from 
Bashar, can you share that with us? Uh, I saw that. Telepathy, according to Bashar, is feeling with a pure heart and your mind tempered with love. Okay. Telepathy? Telepathy. Correct. That's exactly, that's what I'm trying to talk, that's what I'm talking about. Mind tempered with love. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, recently, I had, thank you, recently I had uh, an experience of um, group psychic reading. So this is a, uh, a psychic, classical psychic uh, group, which is using traditional Californian tradition, which was kind of started from academic side and then moved into into the people. Mm -hmm. And there they, um, the teacher psychic and the student psychic or group of partner psychics, they tune together to link together to the same wavelength and then they do the reading. So for that they say, now we tune our crown chakra to a specific color, sometimes like they say, let's move to blue color because of the uh, client, they want to connect to the client on the color of the crown chakra. And then they kind of do that feeling and they might even send some probe out and then they say, no, how about we move from blue to gold, gold. And then we work on the gold level. So I think that is a great lesson how people might synchronize each other before they do telepathic communication, synchronize with each other intentionally synchronized with each other. Okay. Also when you're when they're doing this by color, uh, they're do they're changing the vibrations. They're they're bringing each other into the same vibrational color. And colors have meaning. So if they go into the crown or the violet chakra, this is, this is very high spiritual vibration and they all connect to that color. You can also do this by sound by the ohm. You can bring ohm vibrations if several people do an ohm. All the vibration of the room will start coming together as an ohm vibration, and you will all be connected with that. But in an ohm vibration, also the furniture and all the ex existence, the air and everything is also uh, attuned to the same vibration. But what they're right. doing is doing color attunements, and they're bringing, uh, they, they may want to talk to you about something in the heart chakra. So they'll bring a green, a green uh, vibration. And so they'll connect together in a green vibration and bring in some heart uh, messages and things of that nature. So yes, it's a vibrational change by color. Yes, absolutely. So now I have a, a plan of my download. It's it's for more than one hour, but I will kind of run through it just to give you some ideas. To... Well, so first step for telepathy, for, for learning telepathy. When you learn it, it goes automatically. But when you, while you're learning it, the first step is preparation for the process. And motivation is a huge thing. So it has to be motivated and justified. If you just want to play and show, uh, it, it's hard. It's way harder. If there is a real psychically justified need, if it is spiritually justified, if there is an idea of service, idea of healing of the humanity, idea of improving things, then 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 it's much easier flowing, right? For any psychic work, including telepathy. Um, because we are here going from material stuff, from our thoughts and feelings, we're going to psychic stuff. We're going, uh, we are crossing the boundaries. We're crossing the veils of the, of the matrix and the matrix resists. There is that illusion of materialism. So you need to cross it. So for that, you need justification. You need to really have why you do that. Okay. Second thing is respect respect to boundaries of others. So if somebody doesn't want to be read, somebody doesn't want their mind to be read, somebody is not sending their, their thoughts to you, 
then you have to have a real good justification why would you read their mind so ideally you practice telepathy when there is a consent so people who c communicate have to be in, in agreement um environment you don't want to open your psychic abilities when when you can be attacked like you, you want to turn off your radio maybe turn off your cell phone so you don't want to have anyone who you don't trust in the environment so you don't do it on stage when you are not fully protected so that has to be in a protected environment like off record you might go and hang out off record and make sure everybody in the group is you trust them harm you when you open especially when you're learning that when you already learn it's fine but when you open and starting to learn it it's it's easier to to get harm but on the other hand one of the main motivation is the humanity is in a crisis we need to go over the crisis and ascend and for that ascension we need telepathy so that, that's the main motivation in general it's not for your ego it's for service to humanity you need to establish telepathy and establish a group a community of telepaths and will be the the seed for the humanity which will teach the humanity how to get there all right it, um in the beginning when telepathy is starting to be learned you will need a lot of different controls you will need need the permissions uh slip of the others for minds to be read because there will be those that will just be out there for their own uh, benefit trying to find out as much information as possible but if once you've uh reached the the realms of some of the the higher species you cannot read their minds without permission they won't allow it uh, they can close themselves off to that they can stop you uh, but in the beginnings when there is when you're learning the how to read minds and do te telepathic work oh yes there's going to be a lot of misuse and there's going to need to be respect and uh, permissions but once you get to know it you will be able to control it um i once i asked uh an alien how do you prevent others from reading your mind and they said the intention is the main thing basically if you intend to close that's sufficient so when when you're with the aliens and you don't want them to read your mind you send them a clear message i don't want my mind to be read i don't give you permission that should be respected usually correct um uh, next positive step um uplift yourself so we do the psychic work and um, what is not possible from the state of mind materialistic state of mind lower chakra state of mind the competition ego uh desire uh fear anger when you uplift yourself to love to heart you shift through the diaphragm from solar plexus to the heart and then you go up higher higher and higher and uh, ultimately you go to the crown chakra when all the top chakras are activated you you, be, you just shift up and you go beyond the veil it's kind of over the fence and uh, there are many techniques but uh, basically the main principle you have to be in a higher mind as in reiki the same principle now i will be at peace now i will be at happy state of mind now i will drop my worries my ego it is done for service it's done for the betterment of the creation and then tuning tuning is the main thing how do you tune in tune up uh sync your chakras unite and the main principle to communicate with somebody you have to get on the same wavelength than them as them to get on the same uh, frequency on the same ideas to same motivations and uh, ultimately you dissolve you but you dissolve another person you become them you enter them it's similar to channeling in many ways except you know one is sending another one is receiving i guess it's the same I, almost identical as channeling 
channeling is the alien is elsewhere you are here with telepathy it's another human being but it's otherwise it's it's the same thing you channel them without letting them to enter your body you unite on certain level and um, and then you start a transmission so that's the preparation you have to tune into the state of telepathy when you when it becomes well, until you know what what it is it's it's hard 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 but once you get it it becomes second nature you're you know you don't think it's, it's like walking or drinking or breathe any comments questions so far it's preparation for, for the process good all right a uh, work so while you do the work uh make sure you don't speak at the same time <laughs> some people are capable of that like uh, especially like in in russia and mediterranean and and spanish culture women neighbors can come together and all five of them all seven of them can speak at the same time and it's great communication because they all listen to each other they can speak and listen and talk at the same time but when you practice telepathy make sure you don't pollute your channel you don't send the messages and receive the messages at the same time so sending a message you send it and then you turn off your noise and be in complete receptivity you receive and both sending and receiving require energy it's like in radio uh, the the transmitter needs a battery like now everybody has a cell phone and it needs a battery and the battery has to be charged right and receiver has to have a battery right and sometimes they it's like walkie-talkie they can talk to each other directly and sometimes it's like cell phones they have to have a cell tower in one place in uh, Rochester another cell tower in um, San Diego and the cell tower so the cell phone communicates with the cell tower and then the cell towers are communicated through the cable not through the air through the cable uh, they transmit they package and transmit information so one of the simplest easiest way to, to communicate it's maybe not fastest but it is easiest to learn is you say to your higher self I am my higher self dear Yugananda could you please send uh, a message to Jim through Jim what's the name of your higher self it just changed it's um, Elijah Elijah yeah so Yogananda, could you please send to Elijah a message to tell Jim that we have a rescheduling moment right I can't reach Jim otherwise so that's how it works right could work well and you have to remember this when you're communicating telepathically <laughs> it is like just having a conversation and in your regular life you know not to talk over each other uh, and especially not in a telepathic conversation because you'll cancel each other out because remember in a telepathic conversation you're sending energy out and receiving energy now I wanted to clarify something that he had said earlier mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. whenever it, it is similar to channeling but it is not similar to channeling in the sense that whenever uh, you're doing a channeling you're more receiving you're not actually uh, sending anything out to the beings or anything of that nature you're just receiving them and they're uh, bringing a message through or whatever and that's beautiful and it's it's very important that you keep that uh, uh, channel open for telepathy of this nature you will be sending and receiving which means you have to be on like he said on the same frequency but not only on the same frequency but also on the same um heart pattern in the sense that you you have to be your telepathy comes with a connection from the heart to the third eye to the brain does that make sense to you the heart is always involved in telepathy mm -hmm. I do not know why that is but it always is so the heart has got to be connected whereas in a 
regular conversation, the heart does not have to be connected. But in a telepathic conversation, the heart does have to be connected. Super. Um, I want to bring uh, someone. All right, there is an echo. Who is, uh, who is an echo? Uh, that would be me, Jim. Yeah, that's Jim. Can you make it a little quieter? It's somehow oh. I can. Is it, it mine? Yeah, everybody is muted, but I think it's good now. Okay, so uh, I, I still want to bring a, an expert on telepathy from the other side. It well, you want anyone. to talk to Takur today? Uh, yeah, maybe in uh, about five minutes. I, I want to finish my list, at least the highlights from the list of the plan of the lesson. All right, go ahead. And then we could bring someone. All right, so um, there is a lot of details about how you do it, uh, kind of tips how to start, how to continue. You have to have someone who resonates with you, who wants to do it. So that's important for practice. It has to be an important message. And the message sometimes what I found is it's really hard to get abstract messages, like uh, ascension is a pretty distant idea. But material messages, which are important, like of uh, important nature, is much easier to transmit. And simple, simple, like really simple things. So practice on simple things which are important. If you send something unimportant, like perfect are cards in a way, like uh, playing cards, but they are not charged. Like um, the, uh, how do you call this? Tarot cards are much more charged with meaning. So maybe sending a tarot card look you look at the tarot card and send it to the other person it would be a more powerful practice and uh, there are some images which are really well charged which are dear with you so dear for you then sending these images would be images or meanings would be uh, more easier so there are some special practice uh, images and symbols and meanings and um, words which uh, work really well for the beginner telepath te telepaths and uh, there is the whole schools of telepathy uh, they are now I guess many of them are secret but some of them are were like in 60s 70s uh, so they played with different transmissions and found what works best so there is a science of that um, Funny thing is that I'm not that good in telepathy, but uh, my, my grandfather was saying, if you want to learn something, teach it, right? So so that's my justification why I speak about it. But but I clearly had this morning, I had a download of the whole lesson, the lesson and the main ideas. So I know what to say, although I'm not that good in tele telepathy, but it comes with practice. Uh, then again, you can uh, explain all the theory to anyone and there is a, that nice image you can bring the camel to the water but you cannot make it drink it right so um <laughs> we can explain all the all the wonderful details how to do that but finally what is needed is not describable in war in words you have to really do it and um, and don't get discouraged by the failures like you transmit something and then they just don't hear or they transmit something and you hear something completely different and that happens because it's we are working against the flow go against the noise and against their tradition of many thousands of years of living away from spirit so now coming to that back is uh, is tough but it is you know that's where the challenge is and that's where it's interesting and also there is that's where the future is so you are doing you're right in the right place and there is a lot of karmic charge and um, potential for the breakthrough when the humanity becomes telepathic it will heal a lot of deception Te telepathy and deception are incompatible so all this nonsense which we have now like um, Agent creams and uh, haircuts, which try to hide the nature of the person, all will be wiped out when we can read minds and transmit real things. It's really hard to transmit a lie. Um, so it's up to you to take it and 
put it into practice. Um, one of the things is uh, Wilcock, David Wilcock calls it um, poor, poor man's uh, magic, meaning that in normal situation, in normal situation, you would either have a technology for telepathy, you would have like uh, an implant, which would make it absolutely easy to, to telepathically communicate. You just say, I want to communicate in your mind and tune, tune in to Jim and you would send a message. And Jim would answer, I'm driving, I can't speak. Something like that. Um, so, in, on Earth and it is in many other races and here we have to natural means without technology and it's much more difficult. Also, it was natural for ancestors. We have lots of te telepathic genes in our genome, but it is the education upbringing and the ecology which prevents us from telepathy. That noise from, I guess, cell phone towers, from wireless, Wi-Fi communications, uh, all this electric noise, all this um, technological noise, and anger in the f anger and fear in the air prevented. So, if you happen to be in crystalline nature, in per perfect harmony with nature, telepathy would be absolutely natural. Doing telepathy in the middle of the city with all this politics is much harder, but in any way, it's possible. It is natural for you. So you just awaken to your natural state. All right, keep it quiet. Um, basically, the matrix has a lot of protection, protects itself from uh, from breaches of the whales of the whales. So, if you make a success in your telepathy, don't boast about it. Keep it quiet only for the friends. So you can share it for others who want to learn, but not not advertise it, I'm super telepath, I can read minds um, or transmit my, my, my thoughts. It's a personal opinion, some people might disagree, but in general, if, if you're not sure that it's all given to you and it will, it's all working, um, apply it to yourself and then teach others and create a community where it is within the community the telepathy works. That's how it is easier to break through. Now, an exit is also as important as, as the work. So you prepare yourself, meditate, uplift yourself, do the practice, then you close, and as you exit, and sometime after that, you kind of return back to normal and keep, the, keep closing the doors and disconnecting from that because your channels have to come back to normal state. You don't want to be vulnerable, and also you don't want to spoil that high place of place, time of high vibration. As the exit as, is as important as entrance. You don't want to just be telepathic and then run and fight and um, go into real world with <laughs> real illusion of world with uh, with a lots of its its negativity. And I think I'm done. Okay, I wanted to let you everyone know to be aware of the energies that are around you and within you. Remember, your chakras are energy fields. And your third eye and your heart are both energy fields. Remember he was saying about there are a lot of outside energies that can influence what happens when you're trying to do uh, uh, psychic work. But remember, you there are natural energies within you and around you that you can use. The natural energies are what you need to tune into. These are the chakral energies the energy of your energy field, and also the magnetic field that you grew up in uh, as, as you evolved in, I should say, from, uh, for many millions of years. So attune into those fields. Attune, do your meditation and know about your Reiki energy because those are also all energies that you have within you. You can tune all your personal energies into your psychic energy because those are your energies to use. It's not that they're all there for one purpose. They're there for the multi-purpose of the body to keep your engine running as a human being, to keep the blood flowing, to keep the brain thinking. The All, all the energies that you have can be used in many different ways. So when you're doing your meditation, 
take all these energies that are within you and use them for you to build up your psychic energy as well because that's what they're there for also um remember don't let don't let the outside influences of energy affect you because your energy is much stronger and you can direct it the way you want it to be directed the outside energies are actually just out there and they're pretty random they're moving here and there you have the cell towers and the and the uh, air things moving in the airways they're all pretty random but whenever you're using your energies you can build them up and direct them so this is how it is possible to still be able to have psychic energy in use even though there's all these other energies that you might think would affect you in some ways so is there any questions about that uh can you hear me uh, turn up your volume okay uh, uh your volume is good jimmy can turn on your volume okay can you hear me you're good 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 good, good. okay uh, I have a, a comment and also a question in the same time. Uh, to some degree, I am uh, psychic, and therefore I can read energies of people, and therefore I could not practice telepathy with everyone. Uh, I would uh, like to ask both of you if you could speak about uh, how important it is to choose the right telepathic partner you, you, should, you should eventually, eventually be, able, be able you should eventually be able to have telepathy with everyone or communication with everyone there this means that you're sensitive to certain kinds of energies and you must understand why you're sensitive to these energies there are certain people that may strike you as negative or, or you're just reading them in a way that you, you don't want to be able to communicate with them. But eventually, you will be able to communicate with everyone because the purity of your thought connected to the heart, remember, it's connected to the heart, should be able to communicate with everyone unless you have a personal problem with that person. Wonderful. I would say we are being guided, so just put an intention and wait for somebody. Intention, invite. Say to friends, I'm looking for telepathy partners, and then wait for people to be guided to you, and then you choose, pick and choose. Sometimes it yeah, will be very but... unexpected person, like a different age, like a, a baby, a, a dog. <laughs> The purpose of telepathy in the, for the future, not for the moment, but for the future is to make communication easier and to make communication more intimate, more intimate. And if you say that you can't communicate with everyone, that means there's a problem that you have with that person that you cannot be intimate with them mentally. So that problem will take care of itself as you grow and learn how to be an unconditional lover of humanity in the sense that you they you realize that they are a god being as well as you are not that you realize that they're a good person necessarily but you realize that they are equal to you in humanity and they must be treated as such now that doesn't mean that you will enjoy communicating with them but you will be able to now I would say it would be nice to invite someone channeled okay do you want me to uh, Leela did you have another comment uh, another another question will be uh, what is about when you're opening up and you are in the process of learning telepathy and you do not I was rather uh, talking about the are energies in people that don't fit with your own, and and maybe it sometimes could be dangerous because we are beginners to open up to everybody. 
So my point is be more selective uh, with who you practice telepathy. That was my point. I see. Um, we, we have about nine, nine minutes left. Uh, we have to make a choice. Do we do a channeling or we discuss it by, by ourselves? Well, I wanted to comment on that. And right. she's right that at the beginning, when people are first learning about telepathy, it is wise to choose a proper telepathic partner because not everyone is learning telepathy this, in the same way. There is more than one way to do telepathy but there is one proper way but yes choose your partners well because you want to be able to communicate properly i understand that thank you that was thank you did you want me to bring through to Kerr? how much time you got why well, I, I can go on more than a i can go beyond the half hour all right so Say to 10.45 my time? Yeah, we can do another 15 minutes. Okay, all right. Whoever all right. is uh, appropriate for that answer about the well, instruction. Um, I don't know what she's going to say. She'll probably just I would ask. say, say Pentium might, might be really good. They, they, all right, um, Pentium? They, uh, whoever, whoever volunteers. Uh, we are all right, open. whoever is the volunteering. One moment. This is Pentim. Welcome, Pentim. We have a first uh, class on telepathy, and ah. uh, and we invite uh, instructions on how to go about it. Oh, all right. We have about twenty minutes. Um, instructions on how to become telepathic, or to how to begin the even the pre process. I guess uh, practical advice on what would you do? Like, suppose we come in a group, and how do we practice it? What is the process? Well, as human beings, I know that you are starting to develop a kind of telepathy, each and every one of you in different degrees and from different parts of your psyche, because fourth dimensional energy is... Uh, becoming stronger on your planet and there are some fourth dimensional energy portals open that are feeding these kinds of thought processes. So yes, I can understand why you would be interested in that now. It is a little premature to think that you will become telepathic uh, within the next short while. However, meditation would be the first thought and bringing your energies into alignment and bringing your thought processes into the understanding of what telepathy is really for it is for the for intimate communication but eventually for broader communication but for, at first it's for intimate communication this is the will be the first uses for telepathy is for personal conversation that no one else can hear do you understand that mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and one other person will be involved in just a very personal conversation now eventually with telepathy you can involve more than one person you can speak to this person and that person and they will be able to understand all the things that are happening because your ability to send out the signal will change. It will become more of a broadcast, if that's what you wish it to be. But at first, it will be a single communication, one-on-one. -on -one. And then eventually you will learn how to broadcast that signal to more than one. You could actually be in a conference room 
and speak to a group of people because you can broadcast your thought processes over a, 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 a space in time. But originally, it will be one on one. Wonderful. You know what I realized? Uh, because you're so telepathic, it's hard for you to imagine uh, our state of being. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, do, you, do you know, do you have anyone there, uh, a human who learned telepathy in the colonies? I know they had a telepathic classes in the colonies. Maybe someone who didn't know how to do that, they learned it, and well, then their experience of that. Do you have anyone on hand who can speak? Well, the thing is, you? yes, we have Douglas. Remember Douglas? Yes, absolutely. He's been up here and exposed to telepathy for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. It's not that he is a good telepath at yet, even, but he has been exposed to it and can uh, can involve himself into in it to a, a certain extent because he has been exposed to it and uh, understands from what we have said to him how to develop it. Nice. Is he available? Um, one moment, and I, I'm not sure if Douglas is here right now. Mm -hmm. But there are, the other humans have all mm -hmm. been exposed to uh, telepathy. They don't all use it mm -hmm. because it's not something that's easy for them to use right away. But they have been exposed to it, and it is developing. Nice. One moment, let me see if... Douglas is here. One moment, please. Yes, wonderful. One moment, please. Thank you. This is Douglas. Hey, oh, Douglas. Yes. Thank you for coming. We have about 15 minutes to discuss telepathy. It's our first class on telepathy, and we need some practical advice. Oh, telepathy. Interesting. Um, and what what level are you at? Uh, theorizing. What? Theorizing, making theories about it. <laughs> oh, you're theorizing. Um, well, let me tell okay. you this. I, okay. I have been exposed to it here on the colonies. And being around it in fourth dimensional energy has opened my eyes to how it works in some way. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm really good at it. I'm good at um, more, I'm better at talking with the human language, but I can express some thoughts through telepathy uh, if necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you ask questions, it would be better. Yes. All right. First question is, uh, my friend... Um, Dasha said that when she speaks to aliens, uh, when she is in the presence of aliens, if she doesn't see their face, she can't read their minds. But uh, she can't read what they say. But she has to see the face to receive the telepathic communication. Was it your experience as well? Yes, because in many cases, the eyes are very essential. Eye contact is essential for personal uh, communication with direct te telepathy, mm -hmm. yes. And mm -hmm. so therefore, yes, you can read beyond uh, just the thoughts if they allow you to. Mm -hmm. 
But if people telepathically communicate from the distance, they surely don't see each other. So that would be a different quality of communication, right? Exactly, yes. But I would have to be very close to someone to be able to have telepathic communications. Suppose you want to send a message to Chakur. Would you use a telepathy or some other method? I would use some other means. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would probably use um, uh, an intercom or, or speaker of some sort or, or speak to her in... in I, I know some Liren, but I would speak to her in English and she understands that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you are telepathically communicating with someone, what do you use? On which chakra level are you communicating? On the third eye chakra level and with some degree the heart as well. But let me tell you this. Um, whenever doing uh, that kind of communication, I have to be, I have to be totally unabsorbed with anything else. There, there can be no um, distractions. I have to be undistracted because let me explain why I don't know uh, telepathy as well as I probably should is because when I'm here on the colonies, I do quite a bit of work and I'm not really working on developing my, my psychic energies. I'm here to do a certain kind of work and I'm here to do it well. And so it takes a lot of my concentration. Now, there has been times where they have set aside some time for me to work on some other things other than what I am here to do. And that is how I was able to come into some telepathic work or telepathic uh, communications. Does that so make sense? So what was the practice? How do they teach you? Oh, all right. The thing is, they can send thoughts to my mind very easily because they know how to do it. They know how to transmit those thoughts right into my head. So they can do that. That is something that is that I'm used to. But when I answer back to them, I usually speak. But... A couple times there have been those that said, no, no, don't speak. I want you to try to send back your response telepathically. And so after a while, I learned how to get a few words back. You have to be very aware of where the information that they are sending you is in your brain you will feel it do you know what i'm saying it's sort of a sensation you get mm -hmm. in your brain does it come in language or without language what did you say does information come as words or understandings yes it comes as word but it does stimulate a portion of your brain and you feel it like it's it's right like in the front of your head do you know it what I'm saying? It, it stimulates a certain part of your brain and you feel it. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that is, the, they said, go at that to that area where you felt my words come in mm -hmm. and try to send words back out. Does it come as visual, o audio, or some other way of words? It's audio. Audio, so you uh, hear them actually. Can, can can I jump in? It's Elena. Absolutely, absolutely. Hi, Douglas. It's Ellie, Elena. Hello, Ellie. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Um, nice we are we are working in the colonies at first level of telepathy, and actually we're working. Uh, we are showing how we work with animals and with nature uh, in telepathy in the three di dimension at the moment because it's very easy and pure when you work with uh, animals and with uh, plants and with things of that sort that are. Um, yes clear ex accepting the energy without uh, having second thought or uh, mixing it with uh, emotion and so on yes so, they, they give you little tests to do yes uh, with uh, uh, plants and animals and things but 
usually I have to say when I'm there, <coughs> I'm too busy to really uh, stop and do that kind of thing. Sometimes when I'm home on the earth, I will do some of these little tests as well. But it hasn't been that important to me to actually learn it yet. But I, because of all the other things that I had to learn, uh, but yes. it is something that I would like to do, yes. But it always comes as audio and as uh, in, in your own language. Um, it comes in the language that's dearest to you. The yes. brain translates it in the yes. mother language or the language you speak the best. So the telepathy comes as uh, a message, as a sentence, as words, always. Yes. It does always come as words, yes. Unless they send a picture. There are those uh, yes. species that will send just a picture. And I mean, they'll walk by and send you a picture and you will know exactly what they're talking about because it's such a, it has such detail in it and it, you know exactly what they mean. But um, most of them, when they are talking to you, will send words, audio. Does that make sense? Thank you. And when you are sending, uh, are you sending the uh, audio? How do, you, how do you send the things? Oh, yes. I send, I send, when I send, I try to send uh, a sentence. Mm -hmm. And I try to do as many words as possible. I'm getting better. I, I have to say I'm getting better because I've learned how to control the energies. They've helped me with uh, certain ways. They've explained to me how to do it. But to sit here and explain it to a class would be impossible almost. Uh -huh. How long does it take to send the, the sentence? And uh, do you send it once oh, no, or more? Well, it doesn't take seconds. Long. What? A few seconds. Yes, a few seconds. If you're successful, correct. Do they confirm that they received it? Yes, they always. When they so uh, say usually something back like "thank you" or uh, "very good" or something of that nature to let you know mm -hmm. that they have received what you said. Do they speak with an accent? Um, uh, some of them do, yes. Telepathically. Do you hear like uh, a yell accent when, when you listen to their telepathic messages? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, can you recognize the voice of the person when you listen to them telepathically? Well, usually I'm, I see I'm looking right at them or they're right there. So wow. I know you always who it is. It's not that they're sending it from long distances. Oh, they don't do long distances into your brain? No, 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 no. I have not been able to receive anything clearly from long distance. Because they speak in, you know, very, for, to a different galaxy telepathically easily. Oh, yes, they can, they can do uh, things that, but I cannot, my brain is not attuned to receive it uh, as, as much as they are attuned to send and receive within their own species. My brain is not developed that way yet. Any more questions from the audience? But believe me, um, the brain does develop quickly when you, when you get that stimulus of, of other telepathic beings speaking to you occasionally. Uh -huh. It does stimulate the brain to be able to respond. And that is what you would need down on the earth, is have an alien start to speak to you telepathically. And then you would know where in the brain that this response should be coming from. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. That's an announcement and an invitation. We invite aliens to speak to us telepathically and, and hybrids. And Humans and it makes it that. much easier for humans to to find that place and send the energy to the right places. How it exactly works, I do not know. And trying to explain it to you would, I would have to have an alien explain it to you 
how it actually works. All I know is that I feel the sensation of, and I hear the audio or see the picture, and I know where it, it is in the brain because it's, it stimulates that part of the brain that is receiving. Do you understand? And then you send it out from the very same place. I have a question. Go ahead. Lila. Do, does attunement, attunement uh, help develop telepathy? This, I didn't hear the question. Um, attunement. Uh, what, which kind of attunement? Oh, yes. Attunement. Well, you can get, I got it, attunement with Ganesh. For example, he gave mm -hmm. it, he gave it to me. Uh, so that what, would mean was that it spiritual or in physical. Spiritual. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, let me tell you this about attunement. They do help all parts of the psychic brain. Uh, energy attunements bring energy into greater usefulness into the brain. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. So therefore, so therefore attunements yes. help you to be able to access access uh, the energies in your brain better because that is what they are meant to do. They are meant to be to help you able to use them in your work. And so an attunement is a helpful thing, yes. How the uh, humans uh, from the Hokula uh, group are progressing in the colony with uh, telepathy? Can you say something about it? Or do you have how the problems? attunements in no, no, no. How, how the humans who go to colony on the ship are progressing with telepathy? Oh. There are some here that uh, are doing quite well with telepathy, but they don't have um they when they go back to the third dimension it seems a little different because you see when they're learning telepathy in the fourth dimension it's a little bit easier because of the 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 energy uh stimulates the brain in a different way and so when you're in third dimension Fourth dimensional energy doesn't stimulate the brain exactly the same way. So it is a little harder when they go back. But they're doing quite well in the colonies, actually. Can I, can I give a suggestion for an exercise in the third dimension? Just when you're, when you're somewhere with someone and you need a napkin or the salt or something like that, mm -hmm. just think about it. Just uh, make an exercise. Just try to, or something falls on the ground and you want the other person to pick it up. Just send him the message. Like, can you, can you do this for me or can you do it instead of me or just yes, it's always try to do it to see the reaction yeah it seems like that's when i use uh telepathy the most if my hands are full and i do need something else i will ask yes. uh, telepathically sometimes to uh, for someone to bring me something especially if it's not one of the uh species that speaks a language very often so i will send please bring me this or something of that nature and that that is when i use it the most um i wanted to share i, I went to a um see five close encounters five meditation where people sit in a campground in the field and then they uh, meditate and invite the aliens so the, this group was very experienced and they shifted to a higher dimension and uh, that caused uh, the communication with aliens and there were like clear blinking of stars in the in the sky in a certain area and it was noticed by all the people by many people at once like 24 blinks were noticed by uh, several people at once and that higher dimension made me feel really sick i was feeling that the, the reality is shifting and I didn't feel any comfortable at all. It was painful. I had like 
the whole body was aching. <laughs> In, did you go to too high of a dimension, do you think? Because uh, when you go to a fifth dimensional experience, it's and you go there too fast, it's it's very difficult. I don't know the cause, but uh, it didn't feel good. But I was so happy that the stars were blinking. That was like I was like sick from that. I was seen through the veil of just being sick. But yeah, yeah, they they're blinking. That's sure, and people are noticing that. So they got used to that, and I, it was new to me. So I was like drugged to that. Um, yeah. state and well, when it came I, back it was just normal yes but I'm this, sorry but yeah. they're calling me back right yeah yeah, oh, yeah. to me, me time, yes. something that I was doing that was actually a little bit important so I need to go back to that at this time thank you very much uh, pass our invitation to other um, humans who learn telepathy maybe they can speak some other time um, I think I'm the only one that is here right now, mm -hmm. but um, just send them emails so they are prepared to speak. All right, I see. Thank you. Well, have a wonderful day. It was nice to see you all, and I will uh, perhaps talk to you some other time. Wonderful. Much Thank love, Douglas. Much. much love to you as well. Oh, Liney, hi. Yeah, hello. <laughs> yes. Well, I must go back. Thank you, Douglas. Hello. Hey, thank you, Jim. Oh, you're welcome. It was nice that Douglas recognized Liney. What? Douglas recognized Liney. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, us, us Brits stick together. Say again? <laughs> I said us Brits stick together. <laughs> I need a translation. Yes. To, yeah, to the American. British, the, Brit, the British people stick together. <laughs> wow, Brits. <Love> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Jim. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You look good. You look very good. Thanks. I think you lost some weight. <laughs> Actually, I did the last yeah. couple of weeks. It looks like that. Well, I have to lose some. That winter weight was too much. Yep. Uh, I think uh, the collective is very strong right now for uh, these kind of things. It's very easy to lose a few kilos or pounds. Yes. <laughs> so just do it, guys. <laughs> well, I, I've been doing more walking. It's very sunny out and things of that nature. So it's very good. Thank you, Jim. That was wonderful. I didn't get a chance. This is Wendy. Hi. Um, Hi, Wendy. Hi, honey. Um, Thank you so much. That was really great. I didn't get a chance to ask Douglas, but I wanted to ask, or maybe you could comment briefly on the, the connection between telepathy and light languages. Great question. Between light languages and what? And, and telepathy. 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 Oh, okay. Um, I think that uh, light languages come in downloads, but that is still they still connect to the area of the brain that telepathy is uh, attached to, but they open slowly so that you, you're not overwhelmed. But I think that they are trying to stimulate that part of the brain that telepathy is all about. Absolutely. Uh, same muscle. Yeah, same area of the brain. You may yeah, not I, feel I, it. I suspect it as much. Yeah, I was just curious about that, thanks. Yes. And you may not feel go. it like he was describing, but it is the same area. Um, see you next Friday for the same topic. I guess we can just continue speaking about telepathy. I have tons more to, to say. Okay. Um, uh, and um, Eli, if you can uh, join us for the Saturday webinar, we'll have Rick, um, Richard Allen Miller and... Um, Ah, he nice. Personally nice. invited you. He said you, ah. you charmed him and he wants to speak to you more. 
We we yeah we actually made some telepathy connection. A very good. Um, oh wow! Yes, we we have a lot of topics that we are passionate about, and uh, it 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 uh, made an instant connection with the upper upper body. When when we just said hello and we started chatting, it was it was clear crystal clear that we are connected. At wow! Some level. Wow! Cool. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to try right. to get into the webinar tomorrow too. Excellent. I don't know how long I'll be able to stay. <laughs> when anyone join us? But is it tomorrow or Friday? Yeah, tomorrow, Saturday. Yeah. Who's, yeah. who's that? Saturday, same, who's that same guy? time, uh, eight, my time, eleven uh, Eastern. Richard Allen Miller, doctor, uh, and uh, he's a uh, very alternative a scientist. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think he's PhD scientist. Not certainly not MD. And right. uh, and uh, he is good in um, telepathy. He wrote uh, after he met an alien, a gray. Uh, <laughs> he got a download and uh, published an, a, an, a, an article on uh, a synthetic telepathy. I think it was in seventies. I don't remember exactly when, but sometime in seventies. And it is absolutely essential. So it's much more than we discussed today. All right. Goodbye, everybody. See you tomorrow at usual time. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Stay happy and healthy. <laughs> Bye.